Hey guys, how's the volume, everyone? How's the volume? Let me know. Hey guys, Ooh, a little loud. How's the volume, everyone? All right, so here's the deal. Unfortunately, our boy Christian is a little late. He's tied up in a meeting. Um, I'm not exactly sure when he's coming back. However, this is my first solo live stream. Not going to lie. A little nervous. Don't really know what I'm doing. Got to carry a show all by myself. But you know what? We'll have some fun with it. Um, so for everybody who was here because of the title discussing Basel World 2018, that's what I want to do, um, but I'm going to wait for Christian. I figured in the meantime, i show you a few little goodies that I picked up that you guys may enjoy. Um, but it's kind of funny, though, isn't it? I mean, considering me and him both sell watches for a living, we're both late. I, that's, that's kind of interesting to me. But anyway, I just rolled in through the office uh, myself. I'm, I'm kind of really beat, by the way, today. Pam 111. I'm going to be talking about this one um, soon because there's going to be some changes in my collection. However, I did pick up four new awesome watches today. And I figured you guys would want to take a look. And the first one is in this box. It's a time capsule. This is the best condition version of this watch I've ever seen. It's even got the original papers. Mike B in the house, how you doing, brother? And I just gotta show it to you. You know why? Because it is awesome. It is a mint condition Rolex two-tone GMT Master on a Jubilee bracelet. This thing is awesome. And actually, even though I picked it up for stock, I kind of want to keep it for myself. In fact, let's take the pen right out. In fact, look, this Jubilee has almost no stretch for his age. It's never been polished. It's truly mint condition. And, okay, a little small. Got to put the one link back in. But I don't know, man. What do you think? What do you guys think? Is this Miami or, or, or what? Everybody knows, not the biggest Rolex guy, but when it comes to this vintage stuff, this original, you know, pre-ceramic stuff, that is really, really awesome. By the way, none of these are up on the site yet. It's going to be a little while. They've got to go through inspection and so on and so forth. But then there's another watch, which is the polar opposite of this. The complete polar opposite. And I'm not going to lie. I love this one, too. Let me just open it up here. And what do we have? We got a Smurf, ladies and gentlemen. Solid white gold blue Submariner. Not going to lie. I kind of prefer the yellow one myself. Um, but this is just really understated. This thing weighs a damn ton. Really weighs a ton. I got lucky with Rolexes today. I actually picked up, I also picked up a James Cameron. But I don't know, super, super interesting. I also kind of want to keep this one, but unfortunately, judging, or not judging, knowing what these cost and what I paid for it, there's 0% chance that going in, that's going in Papa Fed's personal collection. And another one, and this one is the complete opposite of Rolex as a whole. And you guys probably don't love it. This isn't for everybody. But this watch, really, trust me when I say it has a cult following. That is the Bell & Ross Skull. These Skull watches really sell well. I just sold the Singapore Limited Edition in red, 
I pick this one up in black. And even though it is not everybody's cup of tea, it has to be said that it definitely has uh, a following. And actually, on my big wrists, looks pretty kick-ass. As I said, I know it's not Rolex. It's a little different, but um, that's what I try and do. I don't want the same old boring stuff all the time. I like to pick up some stuff that, you know, you guys would find interesting. But until, until Christian kind of shows up, I figured we can take this opportunity to do a little q and I'm reading the comments here. I got Larry. A lot of guys I recognize, um, especially from my live shows back on uh, Watch You Want. I got Alexander Pinero, Jason Feldman, Wald's Eleven, of course, Mike B, always in the house. Um, but guys, yeah, let's do a little q and I mean, what do you guys want to talk about? I'm here for your entertainment. I'm your dancing monkey. So uh, give me a hand here. Eddie Landsberg, Stephen Bowden, how you guys doing? Fed needs an all-gold Rolex. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, he does. He definitely does. Daniel Katz, Daniel, I got that Speak Marn for you, buddy. Don't forget to give us a call. Brisco, you're new to the show. Welcome. Yeah, 240 viewers, you're right, Mike. This is This is really picking up. This is really picking up. Um, Mike Morgan says, bronze watches, fad or formidable? I have to be honest. I kind of like them, but in a fad kind of way. Then again, I'm not a great indicator of the market because my tastes are really particular. But personally, I think it's a little bit of a fad. I don't think they really have longevity, but there's always going to be the collectible ones like the Panerai Bronzo. Uh, the new Tudor GMT. Actually, yeah, that, that's pretty funny. And here's the thing. I mean, I, I, I'm going to wait for Christian until I really get into it. Obviously, I'm in love with the Pepsi bezel GMT that Rolex released. But, man, that price point, it's a little hard to swallow. Ten grand for a steel GMT master? I mean, it's obviously going to sell well. There's no doubts about it. And the ten grand, it's not even that crazy. But you know what? It's, I don't know, man. It's, it's a little pricey for me, at least in my opinion. Dex VD, other than Piaget, good thin dress watches. JLC, obviously, is fantastic, as you mentioned. Gerard Perigo makes some decent ones. Obviously, the Calatravas are pretty thin. Not so much long in Glasute. The Germans, they like them thick. You know, innuendo all the way. IWC is also a thicker brand. I don't know. I'm trying to think here. Other good ultra thin. Cartier, the Louis Cartier Ronde. That's a pretty thin movement. And it houses a pretty thin watch. And it houses actually the, the Piaget movement. Fed, how have you rated Rolex this year at Basel World? Elliot Mason asks. Well, man, Elliot, Rolex hit a home run. In fact, guys, go check out Mike B's channel. He did a fantastic little. Uh, Basel World, post Basel World Rolex Roundup, they killed it. I mean, they might as well rename Basel World 2018 to Rolex World 2018. That Pepsi and Root Beer stole it. That's all that matters. The rest of their offerings, the date just, I can take it or leave it. It's a boring release. But, um, but yeah, I mean, they, they pretty much killed it. El Señor Jesus, yes, Blancpain also do great ultra thins. I completely forgot about that one. And Jacques Edro as well. Uh, Fed, talk about the new 36. You know what? Six and a third inch centimeters. I haven't really seen it too much. I can see they change the lugs a little bit, new movement. Apart from that, eh, what's what's there to really say? German says, yes, Bulgari killing the ultra thin game lately, especially with the Octo line. Cannot be forgotten. Let's see. What do you think of the new Hublot smartwatch? Fifty-two hundred dollars. I hope it burns in hell. That's what I hope. Fifty-two hundred dollars for a microchip. I mean, listen. I'm not a huge smartwatch guy, but Apple Watch. I understand that the tag smartwatch kind of pricey. I understand it, but the Hublot, ah, blasphemy. Oh, Christian Zerone. What's he got to say? 
He said he's almost done. So guys, excuse me one second while I email Christian this link because I very much doubt that I'm interesting enough to uh, really carry this whole thing by myself. So I'm just going to email him this link. Hopefully he decides to grace us with his presence at some point. If, uh, there we go. Excuse me, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to answer this uh, text message here. Alrighty then. Bear Cooney watches Mike B. <clears throat> Fed, you're awesome. You know what, man? I at least know you'll always enjoy anything I do on YouTube. Thank you so much. Um, I should do more solo live stuff. You know, <clears throat> here's the thing, guys. In my videos, I'm pretty outgoing. I mean, I've been a salesman my entire life. I can talk. But honestly, I'm not really one for showmanship. If it wasn't for you guys and kind of enjoying this, I'm a pretty reserved dude. So the whole live thing, I'm not so sure if I'm 100% comfortable with that one. Um... Ooh, Tudor, Pepsi, and Black Bays are what the subs and chain teams were in the 60s through 80s. Dex VD, uh, that's a gem. I really, really do agree with that. It is what they used to be, except obviously a little bit in a beefier case. But I'll tell you what, man, I've been falling in love with vintage Rolex recently. There's something about it. And the truth is it doesn't even really fit my wrist, but they're so charming. It, it's, it's really hard to explain. No watch today. Ah, six and a third, 16 centimeters. Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. I was wearing the PEM 111, but honestly, I've been wearing this watch for like 12 hours today. When I got home, I just wanted to take it off. It felt so good. Tanzilan, sorry. $5 donation. Wow. Um, Never got one of those before. Thank you so much, buddy. Guys, it's not required to donate, by the way. I mean, obviously, it's appreciated, but thank you so much. Uh, but let me read his question. Fed, which of the following watches are you chuffed two bits over? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Tudor Black Bay Heritage Red, Breitling Super Ocean 2, IWC Engineer. Um, Tudor Black Bay Heritage, all the way for me. Breitling Super Ocean Heritage is cool. I'm more of a Chronomac guy. And the IWC Engineer, I don't have mine handy right now, but I prefer the vintage ones. Tudor Black Bay Red, all the way. Jimmy, oh god, here we go, same BS. Oh, sorry about that, I don't know what you're referring to. Daniel, Fed, you are the best watch channel on YouTube. Uh, you're going to make me blush there, buddy. <laughs> watch Doctor, that's Bobby, Bobby K. Buddy, how you doing? Listen, next time, um, hit me up for dinner. Next time Maddie's in town, we should all go out to South Beach. You have to bring out that Snoopy. Uh, Robin C. Uh, all shitters. Up. Oh, sorry. Oh, getting a phone call. Christian Zerone. Listen, you're you're being uh, you're being recorded right now. I'm I'm still on air. Ooh, we are being recorded. Um, but why don't you go into that email? And click the link, join my live stream. Because I'm choking here without you, buddy. I can't carry this what, by myself. What, um, where did you, where did you put it in? Do you Harris email? Info and Theo and Harris. You're the man. I'll be on in about three seconds. All right. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Christian is joining us. Thank God. Uh, Grand Seikos need love, too. Aaron Sullivan, you know what? I'm kind of known as a Grand Seiko hater. That's really not true. I am starting, I mean, I've always really appreciated them, but. That's just not my thing. Peter, for the help. Peter, 10 pound donation, once again. Uh, not necessary, but thank you so much. Thank you so much. Another one, oh, you, PO Technic. Oh, you guys are too nice. Sorry to ask a dumb question, but will there be a Rolex release at Basel World? More Rolex releases. I think all the big releases are pretty much over from Rolex, but you never know. What, Christian, are you back? Federico! 
Oh, he's here. All right, buddy. Thank you what so much. Going? For sorry, time. sorry, sorry for being late. I uh, I did an interview with a wonderful um, entrepreneurship podcast. It was called uh, Entrepreneur Before Twenty Five, right? Uh, Twenty Twenty Five Tribe. Yeah. So we did it, and it was it was great. So I just got off. Well, take, dude, wait, take a bye to Anna real quick. Anna's about to leave. Say goodbye. Anna, Anna wave to Fidelity. You guys don't know. When I first started Delray Watch, Christian was a huge help to me. I, I called him more than once to ask for advice. So it's pretty awesome. Dude, no, you, you know that. I mean, everyone everyone kind of laughed uh, when when you started. They were like, wow, you had him on the channel? Uh, and I was like, yeah. They're like, oh, that was really cool. I was like, what are you talking about? It's, it's, it's part of my French. It's fucking Federico. Like, what are, what are you? Come on. It's, Ridiculous. It's not even it's not even a conversation to be had whether or not uh, I was excited or supportive. I mean, and it's not a pat on my back. You would do the same thing threefold. And you have. You've given me a ton of business. Oh, dude, I'm I'm happy to. Plus, there's no hey Anna, what's up? Sorry, I'm on a <laughs> delay here. I just saw her peeking. No worries. Um, no, listen, guys, it's it's all about support, right? I and mean, you've sent me business, I've sent you business. And honestly, I think you know, more than the competition, you've probably made me more money than taken away to be honest oh yeah it, it, it's honestly like and and any little any little losses that we have had because of each other are so outweighed by by the gains and and even if it was just frankly i mean it makes it makes it a little bit easier that we do sell different things right that does make the arrangement a little bit more convenient you know that you don't know how to sell a date just to save your life um, <laughs> i've had like four of them in stock i can't give them away guys Delray, <laughs> Tom, three for one sale <laughs> Can, can I take it? Can I take you up on that offer? <laughs> Sold to Christian. Sorry, you guys Sold are too late. Christian. Uh, I'm gonna lift up my computer. So um, yeah, so I had this wonderful interview with this with this super uh, super nice uh, young entrepreneur, um, Shalon, and uh, we talked about you know business and, and starting a business, which is obviously super relevant to you and your life. Uh, quitting the corporate world. Uh, I mean, I know your story all too well. I mean, the the I, once again, we we can curse on your channel, right? Yeah, for, uh, I mean the thirteen. Okay, I mean the um the courage, you know the 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 audacity, you know it took to uh, to do that to me is just I don't know it, it for me it's very inspiring. So well, good, dude, good on I you. haven't had a good night's sleep since mid two thousand seventeen, but apart from that, it's all good. Really, you look beautiful. Okay, <laughs> let's talk Basil World. Yes, Basil World. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna start off by saying. I've been so completely swamped. I haven't really paid too much attention to Basil World apart from Rolex, Tudor, and Omega. That's I was going to use my Saturday and Sunday to catch up on Basil World, but hey, let's wing it. Okay, so did you, uh, you know the, the, the most obvious, right? Rolex released the Pepsi GMT. One, do you care? Um, yes, I'm a huge Pepsi fan. I As am I. I love it. I think it's awesome. I do really care. I think the price is a little ridiculous. Nine grand, right? Ten. Ten. Or, Ten. or close to it. Okay. Um, here's what I think. I think that the Pepsi GMT is a wonderful watch. I think it's one of my favorite watches ever, right? For a lot of reasons, it being my dad's first watch, you know, big one of them. Um, and I think that Rolex should be commended for their release of it. It's a well-executed watch. I think that it's 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 very hist uh, historically correct, and I think it's a, it's a logical modern evolution of that Rolex heritage. But I do think, and I'm a Rolex fanboy. I, people say it all the time, and it's the truth. I do think the pomp and circumstance, are, you know, around Rolex releasing this watch is a little bit much. I know we wanted it. I wanted it. By the way, Christian, I, I hate to put you on pause for a second, but I'm new to this whole live streaming thing, and I've got people donating money, which, I mean, thank you so much. It's not required. I just have to feel – I feel i got to acknowledge these guys. Bear Clooney watches, Mike B. Listen, man, you know you don't have to, but I love you anyway. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Good for you guys. Good for you, Federico. So, um, no, but listen, I, I totally agree. In fact, I just picked up this today. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's literally yep. a new old stock. Two, two tone, yep, two tone, beautiful bracelet. But new old stock. I mean, this yep. is is new, and to me, and I've owned the I've owned the Pepsi. You know, I've owned the Pepsi. But to me, these are so much more charming. 
the the two tones. I love the two tones. Well, the two tones or just the pre ceramics is what I'm, is what I'm saying. Oh, oh, okay. Um, well, I, well, one, I think the two tones are quite nice. Two, uh, the pre ceramics are beautiful, but the pre ceramic is you know a class divided as well. I mean, sixteen seven five looks nothing like uh, uh, what sixteen seven one zero, right? You're you're hundred percent right. But here's the thing: to a guy like me, who's more of a, a modern guy, I'm not, I'm not not an expert in vintage. While there is, while there are differences, to me, there's a much bigger difference between the last no, aluminum right. and the first pre and the first ceramic. And the last aluminum was what? Oh five. By the way, I'm drinking amaretto from the motherland. <laughs> oh, very, very nice. Could you I, imagine? Uh, could you imagine? I mean, how how greaseball-y can you get drinking amaretto on a Thursday night? Dude, uh, it's at least you're not drinking on a set. <laughs> I'd be I'd be lying if I told you I wasn't drinking on a set an hour ago. <laughs> Such a schmuck. Oh, oh wow. Oh, Tanzil Ansari. Fre um, he asks a question here. A friend recently yeah. purchased the Patek Philippe 5110 World Time Grand Classic. I think it's a bit small at 37 millimeters. Christian, what are your thoughts Hold on, on watches Google 33 to 37? Hold on. Uh, I'll answer that question. I want to look at 50, 50, what, 5110. What was it? Yeah, it's, the, it's 50, 5110. It's the original Patek World Time. I'm going to look it up real quick. Okay, of course. I, I just wanted to, By the way, me looking this up on my phone should really inspire all of you guys to stop pretending you know references. Not you, Federico. You know no, all the references. Uh, no, I, I know. I, no, I'm no, not. I'm no not. Reference. No, no, no. Yeah, but you know how many watches. I can't even compare how many watches I know and how many watches you know. But guys, I, who many of you look at as an authority on watches or, or a fun or a really, really, you know, uh, not knowledgeable, very opinionated authority on watches, um, I look up references. It's not embarrassing. It's, 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 it's just normal. And, and you know, too to weak to, to, to lie about – put it this way. When I talk about vintage Rolex and Paddock, and I know quite a few references to people at watch shows or events, and I know they're lost, I think it's lame when they try to keep up. I think it's lame. Just, just tell me. Just say like, "Hey, which watch is that?" And I'd be like, "Oh, yeah, of course, dude. It's the, it's the, you know, Mono Pusher Chronograph from the '40s, you know. And oh, look at this one, you know. And, and we have a good conversation. But to have a superficial conversation where you're pretending to know references is lame. I, I mean, I, whenever I have a dangerous question, I just ask. Like, for, no one can know everything. Like me and Rolex, I don't know Rolex at all. I have to ask you what a Sigma dial was the other day. I know, it, it, and 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 this once again. No shame in it. And I think that a lot of people, um, when it comes to like, you know, interest, uh, complex things like watches, they feel a little bit inadequate. And my point is you shouldn't feel inadequate. You're a passionate person. You know a lot about something uh, or you're just learning. There's no reason to be embarrassed. You don't know obscure series of numbers from the 40s. Like, please, man up. You know what I mean? And listen, the only reason I even know one Piaget reference number is I worked for them for three years. <laughs> you know what talk, I mean? Talk to me about Piaget. Talk, talk to me. I want I want your opinion on the Piaget versus Bulgari war happening right now. All right. Well, first of all, Tom, welcome to the chat. But, okay, Piaget, listen, man, I've got nothing for love for that brand. They made my career. I love everybody that works there. I'm a big fan. But this whole push into the Polo West and sports watchers, it's just not who Piaget is. And Bulgari totally, right now – Totally agree with you. Bulgari is eating their lunch. Bulgari is eating Piaget's lunch, the thinnest tourbillon, the thinnest automatic. Piaget just can't keep up, which is unfortunate because to me, historically, Piaget is... Oh, it's in, in, infi in, no, infinitely better. Not even infinitely better, historically. But, but right now, Bulgari's, you know, really on top of their game and, you know, they're eating Piaget's lunch. And, that's and here's what I think that Bulgari has going so right. I think that the juxtaposition in Bulgari between this ultimate utility design, right? The hard lines, uh, brushed metals, beside the, mo the utmost, most delicate movements, I think that's a wonderful and interesting you know, uh, di you know, dichotomy or juxtaposition. Well, I think that that's the same reason the Royal Oak was so cool. The Royal Oak was beautiful when it was thin. Right, because the watch looks like the most utilitarian, aggressive watch ever. And actually, Christian, on that note, uh, some guy, uh, James Roseman, asks a, a very important question, especially for you. Resale be damned. Okay, forget resale value. The simple overseas Vacheron date, 
or a Royal Oak 15400 if you had about a 6.75 inch wrist. If you had to pick one, what would you do out of this? Kit? I'd do the 15400. To me, I and I and I probably I prefer the overseas line better. Um, I would not buy an overseas for my wrist that wasn't the ultra thin in white gold. Unfortunately, it only comes in white gold. That to me is the perfect overseas. Um, and I would always just be, I would always just be upset. I didn't have it. I'm just, you know what? I kind of agree with you, but I'm so over Royal Oaks, man. I just, I can't. Who's that? TGV beeping in? <laughs> no, it's, it's Mike B. Hold on one second. Mike. Mike. Yeah. I think he, my, my, by mistake, Mike B, you're in the chat. You called. I uh, know, but no, Christian, I was saying, I'm, I'm just, I'm so tired of seeing Royal Oaks, man. That's all AP is nowadays. What about Millinery, Jules Audemars, Edward PA? I mean, they need to bring that back. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I agree they should bring back other lines to make them a more complete manufacturer, but I think that. Um, if they were to just focus on the, if it's just going to be a Royal Oak manufacturer, do the Royal Oak really well. And I feel like they've almost cheapened that too. I personally hate the, uh, the titanium and the, or the platinum Royal Oak that just came out with that shiny bezel. I think it's very ugly. Um, I'm sorry for those of you who own it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you, I hope you scratch it. Different strokes. Death. Different strokes is right. Um, Nazism was for certain people, though. So different oh strokes. Oh my god! <laughs> no, 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 no. Hard line stance. <laughs> no, it's just. I, I just. I, I always hated when people said different strokes, even though you're totally right. When it comes Hold to style. I'm sorry, dude. Mike. Mike. No, I, I'm reading them, buddy. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Doesn't he know you're alive? Yeah, Mike's watching. He's like, dude, read the super chats. People are donating money. I'm trying to keep up. I really wait. So, so Mike, what's his last name? Mike B. Man, this is a uh, so Mike B. Watches. He he's on Facebook, right? He runs Horology Talk. Uh, he's very guy. active. I've seen him a thousand times. Mike B's a really interesting guy. He's got he's got a lot of great watches, right? A lot of Rolexes. He does. And before we talk about that, I do have to answer this question. Guys, I'm, I'm really sorry with the super chats. I'm not asking anyone to donate. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little behind. But what what diver catches the most attention in Manhattan, uh, Christian? Bong Pong 50 Fathoms. No. Royal Oak Diver. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean? Like an offshore? Uh, well, the offshore diver. You know. Oh, yeah. Offshore diver, yeah. An Omega Seamaster. Or this guy's just trolling. Tenzil, I'm sorry, he's trolling. Or a Squalet. I think that the lion shark gets the most attention. I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know what? I'm keeping this live stream clean. Okay, I know, not, I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna pretend um, you didn't say anything. No, I think, um, I think the fifty nine eighty, right? I mean, is that considered a dive watch? I mean, it's it, it's is it? I don't know. It's a Nautilus, so I feel like it has no, to be. I, I, I wouldn't get that watch gets a lot of attention though. That's a hot watch. I, I don't like it, but it's a big watch, man. It's big and it's a Nautilus, you know. No, it's true. I mean, I think the Royal Oak Diver is definitely the, the biggest eye catcher. I mean, the thing is with like Paddock, though, the Paddock sports watches, like, I wouldn't even wear a, a, an Aquanaut in the rain. I'd be too scared. I mean, I don't know what people love them so much. Those things are What's fragile. The, are they fragile? I don't, see, I don't even know that from personal experience. It's the same movement as in, as in like, the Calatravas. They're non-hacking. Oh. It's the same design as the 60s. I mean, uh, listen, I'm, I just have a lot of Aquanaut hate inside me. That, that's all. See, I happen to like the Aquanaut. I, I don't know much about it, but I, I happen to – I like that it's not a Nautilus. I like that it comes on a rubber strap. I like that it's more affordable. Not only more affordable, I like that you can actually get one, you know. Yeah, but can you believe – I mean, I'm I just sorry. got a Tinder match. You got <laughs> – <laughs> while, see, while I'm live streaming, some girl must have just seen us live. I bet you one of the girls locally must must follow Federico Tux watches, and she just swiped right on me because of this. Oh, you're welcome. Don't tell <laughs> Emma. Yeah. <laughs> so. But ba back to Basel World real quick. Well, okay, so what do you think, in, in contrast, Rolex, new Pepsi GMT, however, Tudor with the Diet Pepsi. That's what everybody's calling it. The diet, it's good. Um, I uh, very good. You can't really compare them in price, right? So dollar for dollar, I go Tudor. Um, 
dollar for dollar. I I, I don't. Uh, I wouldn't. I, I would put it this way. I wouldn't own the Tudor. It's for me. It's it's a wonderful watch. Um, it's just not my jam. Forty one millimeters is too big. I would own the Rolex first, but I would recommend if if a Pepsi bezel Rolex owned watch is going to scratch the itch, go black. Go 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 GMT. Go Tudor GMT. That's how I feel. Well, and let me ask you this, man. I mean, I agree with you on that. I I think the Tudor GMT is a hell of a value. Have you seen the new Wave Dial Seamasters? I saw, put it this way, I saw the um, advertisement on Hodinkee and I was so disinterested that I didn't even click. Dude, I mean, I'm sorry if I offend anyone and I don't really curse on my channel, but that thing is fugly. I mean, it looks like zebra print and I love ostentatious watches. I know, you have no taste. <laughs> You know what I'm really into, dude. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a watch. You, you talk about something while I pull up a watch. All right. By the way, guys, if I ever make it big, everybody everybody knows I'm gonna be wearing a GMT Master Solid Gold Patriot Ruby and Sapphire. Ready? So a, a cousin of mine gave this to his friend. Holy shit! So that is the full diamond Piaget Polo. Please tell me a man's not wearing that. Oh, it's a man. Oh, a man is wears he, that. And he's, and, and, he's an, and he's an older man. He's, an, he's 80, 80, 80 years old right now. Is he in the um, mall? Did he have anybody wax? No, that's ridiculous. But that watch is out of control. I wouldn't wear it. It would look ridiculous on my wrist. It would look ridiculous. But I've got to say in the most disgusting way that I know is so wrong. It's so wrong. When I, I've seen it in person many times. And I'm just like, whoa. No, oh, <laughs> that is a watch Federico would would it would, would pretend to dislike but really love. Well, listen, I would wear it if it was like forty five millimeters. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, the di the diamonds don't turn you off. It's the millimeters. That's great. I love the self awareness, dude. A little bit of ice never hurt anybody. A little bit of ice goes a long way, man. Dude, I'm, I'm telling you. I Listen, I'll put it this way. If I'm, if I'm ever lucky enough to get married, I'm going to have more diamonds than my wife. <laughs> I, I have a diamond day date right now. Do you see that? Ever see that watch? It's uh, out of control. No, but is it with you? Can you show? But I don't have it with me. I'm just bringing my Omega. Actually, Omega just remade this Omega. It's the same. That seconds. is one of the most handsome watches out there. Yeah. And the scary part is we all know it's not going to sell particularly well because nothing that's not a Seamaster or Speedmaster sells well. Right. So that thing's going to be like... Thirty-five hundred dollars gray market in no time, which is hysterical, right? It's just, so. I got this watch. My mom and dad gave me this one, um, which is the one that I'll make it just remade with the center seconds um, for my twenty-first birthday, um, and I, I absolutely, I absolutely love it. But I thought it was kind of cool when they when they remade it with this new one. I was like, oh, Omega, you know, Omega. Is that in my watch? Bracelet? No, this is a um, this is a beats of rice from an old Longines that I put on my Omega. I stole it Makes off the Longines. I like exactly. I, li I like it a lot. See, I, there are no rules, guys. Look at that. By the way, Kenzil Ansari is on fire with the Super Chats, and he wants to know, Fed Christian, which of the following is considered a rare bird? Rolex 1630. By the way, I have no idea what that is. A Rolex 1655. Also no idea. A 1655 is the, is the original Explorer. It's the Explorer 2. It's the Steve McQueen. All right. Rolex 1530. Or Six. a bagel sport. Shut up with the bagel sport. <laughs> okay, Rolex. Oh, Rolex 1630 is the two tone, um, not oyster quartz. That's the one that is the, the one that looks like an oyster quartz, but is oh, not. But that's super uh, rare. I think really the other one is more rare. The the steel version, uh, with that like champagne dial. They were silver. I I don't remember the references. What was the other one? So it was the 1630. The the, the 1630. The Steve McQueen. Right. Or the 1530 Rolex. The Rolex. I think the 1530 is what I'm talking about. I think that's the uh, that's the non oyster quartz. Yeah. So the fifth. So the 1530. Put it this way, Tizil. Um, rarity doesn't matter, right? Desirability matters, right? Rarity, you know, can can be very important, but it's not necessarily. A watch, because it is rare, does not mean it's good or you want it. Now, rarity is a massive selling point when a watch is desirable. Right, hey, Christian. I got the perfect rare watch for you. I think you need to add it to your collection right now. You're right. What? what? 
That's a rare watch. Tazil, you should buy it. You love rarity. Buy the watch. Dude, um, if this so, doesn't say if this doesn't shout Christian Zaron from Theo and Harris, I don't know what I, I don't know what it does. So that's that's my point. Rarity is a wonderful asset and a desirable watch. <laughs> a desirable a, a desirable watch that anyone can get anytime is always going to have a ceiling on its price. Whereas oh, a desirable watch that is rare has no ceiling almost. Well, look you at know? the humans. I mean, it's just stupid right now. It's just Well, that's not even a rare watch, right? The Newman isn't even a rare watch. I mean, but also there's something, the man, the vintage watch mafia is going strong. I mean, you can like, there's one Daytona where it's more expensive. It's missing a word on the dial. Like there's, oh, there's what, the, so, the, so, the solos. Is that what you mean? Yeah. And, and there's people out there. They're just taking off the paint from the dials. Well, they did that at Phillips. Oh, did, did what did what did Mr. R. L. Box have to say? Phil, Phillips auction was caught doing that. Actually, I know the guy that bought it, uh, and and he um and he you know told Phillips one I won't pay, uh, and moving forward you will not uh, charge me buyer's premium, uh, which is pretty funny. You know, they got caught, you know, and and that doesn't necessarily mean that you know that, that that they did it on purpose. Um, I can't speak for you, but I know that myself and many other dealers have made mistakes. It happens, and if it hasn't happened to you yet, it will happen to you. It's just a, it just it just happens. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean you're an idiot. It doesn't mean you're stupid. It doesn't mean you're lazy. It just means that you're dealing with thousands of variables on a monthly basis, and occasionally something slips. Well, hold on, Christian. Well, Ahmad B, I haven't forgotten about your super chat. I'll answer that in a second, but Christian. Thing is, yeah, we all make mistakes. You have, I certainly have, and what matters is, is we make up for it, the customer service, we make it right. Right. But when an organization like Phillips, with yes. the biggest auctioneer behind them, Oro Box, yes. makes a mistake on a watch of this price, I mean- 100% people- agree with you. One, how many watches is Phillips selling a year? What are they, how, many, how many lots in an auction? Eighty, uh, you know, I, I, all I know is that uh, I'll, like, like don't I'll there, there are no excuses. You do you do five auctions, four auctions a year at eighty a piece. That's that's not even four hundred watches, dude. How many hundreds of watches do we do? You know, on, on you know every month there it's it's eighty, a hundred watches, seventy watches, eighty watches. So every you know, d- don't don't Phillips try to compare. You know, and and you're demanding massive premiums, and you're already dealing with incredibly rare and elusive and desirable watches. So to me, there is no excuse for Phillips making a mistake. It the burden is on them to not just apologize, but for it never to happen. Right. But what happens if no one would have ever called them out? Could you imagine? You're right. You're right. What do you do? Luckily, the the online watch community, you know, is is super intelligent and is super uh, vocal. So I don't see it happening all too often. But crap happens, man. It's true. Well, here we have a super chat from Ahmad B. Uh, thanks for your patience, buddy. He says, "Fed, am I crazy buying a solid yellow gold blue dial ceramic uh, Submariner?" No, you're not crazy. That's awesome. In fact, it's if a great you can afford it, buy two and send me one. Sprinkle yeah, some lemons exactly. on it. Exactly right. I totally agree. And That's then a great watch. We got Tyler who says something. This is a question for you, Christian. Is it crazy to wear a 40s slash 50s Rolex Oyster daily if it's been serviced? Also, he says, now that I know that Christian's on Tinder, that means I have a chance. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um. I think well, it depends what your daily looks like. My daily, I wake up, I go for a run. I don't wear a watch when I run. S- sorry. Um, I, there, are two, there are two times I don't wear a watch. One when I run and two when I'm carrying tens of thousands of dollars in watches. I never wear a watch. When, when, I, when, I'm, when, I'm commute, when I'm moving around with serious amounts of watches or cash, I don't wear a watch. One time I was in the city um, and, a, and a watch, this happens flatteringly often. Uh, someone was like, Yo, Christian, Christian from Theo and Harris. And I was like, yo, what's going on, buddy? And he goes, what you got on the wrist? And I wasn't wearing a watch because I was carrying, you know, a, a, a very substantial amount of, of watches. Um, and I don't want to draw any attention to myself. And he goes, uh, he goes, oh, he thought I was a total phony. He thought I didn't like watches at all. He thought like, oh, great. Like the guy likes watches on YouTube, you know, and then when he's in, you know, when in reality. Meanwhile, I, I messaged him and, and explained to him over message. I was like, by the way, when I am commuting with things, I ne- what am I going to wear? A date just? What, God forbid I run the risk of wearing something. Do you know what's almost more embarrassing <clears throat> More embarrassing than that that happened to me the other day? I'm walking to the supermarket 
And some guy stops me. Same thing. Hey, Federico, I see you on YouTube. What's up? What are you wearing? You know what my answer was? What? An SKX. Oh. And I'm like, listen, I love my SKX to death, but I imagine, like, at that point, I'm like, why couldn't I have been wearing my, like, limited edition Speedy or something? Yeah, yeah, no, it's SKX is a wonderful watch, nothing to be embarrassed of, but well, nothing at all. Like I, I literally just saw, not not that I sold it to them, I didn't make the sale, but I convinced someone to buy an SKX three days ago, right? Uh, they, they heard what they wanted in a watch, told them to buy an SKX. But for you know you, someone who people look up to as you know this big authority on watches, this person has access to things that I could never get, you know, to run into you and be like, oh my god, Federico, what do you have? And then it's an SKX, and they're like. Oh, that's really cool, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but terrible. but go to DelrayWatch.com and spend ten times the price. Exactly right. Oh, we so. got a super chat here. This is hilarious. Tenzil Ansari is on fire. All right. So Christian, does the JLC Reverso Grande date make you say which of the following statements out loud? This guy's a sick freak. Boom, watch fam. Hey guys. I'm chuffed to bits or fuck me dead. <laughs> oh, a little, uh, a, 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 a very, um, a very, uh, a YouTube watch geek informed uh, person. Um, I say, uh, I say, hey guys, hi guys. That's, 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 that's my move. Wait, and let I'm me guess, very go. One, yeah. but I'm not going to lie. If I had one, I would definitely say I'm chuffed to bits. I'm chuffed to bits. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Brutal. I just throw up. You guys, you guys, the guys in the chat are just here to get me in trouble. No one's interested in any watch. Discussion. I think I'm here to get you in trouble. I think everyone here is, everyone here is trying to get you in trouble. There we go. Dude, it's been a long day. Plus, you didn't get me in trouble, man. You got stuck in that interview. You made me juggle like a monkey. You know, I was the dancing monkey for these YouTube viewers by myself. Dude, I, I it was it was a wonderful interview. The one the girl was the girl was awesome. So we had a lot of fun. So listen, what else, Basil World? What what else did I miss? I think you've been paying attention a little bit more. Um, than yeah, Rolex released the root beer in both rose and two tone. Uh, Nomos well. released the um, the um, Autobahn, a watch that looks very nice but makes no sense. Wait, um, what's the oh the Nomos? I actually like that. No, it's nice, but it's not very legible. Um, it almost has no driving history. It doesn't. It just doesn't make very much sense. And and I think that Nomos, like I think we can kind of all agree that Nomos's identity is everything you want, nothing you don't, no, nothing you don't need. Everything you need, nothing you don't need. You know? I, I feel so like the, so the, to put this extraneous. Yeah. You know, color on the dial. It doesn't seem very Nomos. That seems like a Kickstarter watch brand design. You know, so not that I don't like it. It just doesn't seem very Nomos. I, I think the guys at Nomos were just like, "Hey guys, we're running out of German shit. What's very German?" The Autobahn. <laughs> yeah, the Autobahn. And like, there you go, Nomos. Yeah. That's Maybe we should make a watch to tell everyone how much we hate Nazis. That's trying too hard. <laughs> you know? That's the second time you've said the N-word in my stream. You're about to get booed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I went to um, – uh, I, studied, I studied religion in college. So, so, the, so my, my Nazi references are, are totally from college, right? Because um, you know, when you're studying religion, everything you talk about you know, is like <clears> – <throat> It's like real, like ethical, like problems and stuff. So, sure. so once you open up the door to one thing being okay, the most extreme version of that is then also okay. So ev every four minutes, the name the Nazi came up. You know, like every four minutes is like, oh, you're okay with that? Well, then Nazis. You know. So by, by that, by by your explanation, then you know I can own an Oyster Perpetual, and that makes it completely cool for me to own my Patriot. Because it's yeah. <laughs> Exactly right. Dude, I, I have a friend that, that uh, he's a real Guido. I love him to death, but he's a real Guido. And uh, he didn't know the Patriot existed. I showed it to him on Monday, and he was like, whoa, <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> oh, man. Listen, that's the beautiful thing about watch. I mean, here's the thing. I love the watches you like. Like, I love a lot of the watches on your website. They're beautiful objets d'art. I just can't wear most of them, and I feel what like. What did you say? They are beautiful objets d'art. Yeah, uh, like uh, it's me being pretentious. Like uh, uh, art, art objects, like like in a museum. You know what I mean? I didn't know that was a word. Well, consider yourself schooled. I am, um, but you know, it's it's you don't have to wear something to really appreciate it. 
is my point. I totally agree with you. I I am happy. You're very welcome. I am a ha- very happy knowing the Longa 1815 chronograph exists. I will never own the Longa 1815 chronograph. Why not? That is awesome. I love it. I love I, I, the the fact that that watch exists makes me feel warm on the inside. I will and, never own the watch. Why won't you own one? What the hell? Don't need to. Don't need to. It's 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 extra. I mean, I'll put it this way. Who knows how much money I have? Maybe in the future, God knows. I hit the lottery or whatever. But um, I am not anywhere close to that financial position. And I I guess at the moment I just can't imagine it. But uh, but put it this way: even if I never get to own it, I'm happy. I'm happy knowing it exists. It's a wonderful, wonderful watch. Uh, I am. It makes like I said, it makes me warm. So good but for the long age. That I know it exists, and I don't have one. <laughs> Well, there are things that things that I can that are in relative affordability, right? Like, like I love Cartier. You know that. Uh, when yes, I see a beautiful American, not Amer- American, or I see a beautiful Cintre, or I see a Santos Dumont, I can technically afford that. Not easily, but I can afford it, right? So I'll buy it and I'll wear it and I love it and and that's it. It's stretching myself, but I'm cool and I do it. Uh, an 1815 chronograph is not stretching myself. That is destroying myself. You know what I mean? Uh, like, I got you. And by the way, this uh, chid roll says Christian can't even afford to pay his rent. <laughs> That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Um, actually, uh, here's the thing. One thing I did notice from Basil World, because I think people are getting annoyed. We're straying off the subject. Apart from Rolex, and I said earlier, this, this year might as well have been called Rolex World 2018. But another winner is, did you see H. Moser's commercial making fun of Patek Philippe? Yeah, I did. You what loved you it, think? right? It doesn't sound like you're a fan. I think H. Moser is a funny brand. I think they're very cheeky. I, I like it. I love Swiss Made again. That was really interesting. Um, and I do tend to agree that the the guy that buys a 5980 for his son – the guy's probably an absent father, and the son's probably a cokehead, right? I just think that. I Unfounded. Mean, but that was the point of the H. Moser thing. That was the point. The, much, the, yeah. the point was, you're buying a $30,000 watch or a $20,000. The odds are you're at work all the time, and you're, and you, or, or you earned it, and you're a good guy, but your son is, is a jerk. Right? That, was the, that was the implication, which – I agree, and 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 I one hundred percent agree. They're probably right, um, but um, I don't know. I just don't see apart. You know, when I started Theo and Harris, everything was bullying other brands. That was my thing. I would bully I anyone in sight. Everything was, bu- but I was I was freaking nineteen. Everything was bullying. Everything in my life was, you know, and it wasn't like bullying in normal life. But everything in watches was, Tudor, you're dumb. And now I'm Tudor. That was a stupid move for these three reasons, right? So I've oh. evolved. So I think that Moser needs to just grow up. Not that they need to get rid of their, you know, scathing content. I think they need to make it a smaller percentage of their overall content portfolio. Drop the mic. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, let me just say this. I'm I'm also guilty of it. Hell, when I started my channel, I took massive, you know, hypothetical dumps all over a dinky. And that's a good thing. Like, and Hodinky deserved. You can dump on Hodinky. One of the funniest. One of I, I, we both ripped on Hodinky for years, right? We did, yeah. I mean, I, one I, of I the though. best Hodinky, one of the best Hodinky rips I ever made. Kara Barrett, who seems like a wonderful person and a really like intelligent, likable hip her and no, 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 she seems wonderful. She seems super intelligent, and she seems truly passionate about watches. Good on her. Wish her nothing but the best. I read an article that she wrote about some baloney company, right? Some company that obviously, in one way or another, compensated Hodinky heavily to get published in their site, right? And she got stuck with the article. God knows she didn't want the article, but what is she going to go tell? Ben to go screw himself? No, of course not. You just do it and you shut up and you do your job, right? You, you pick out the good. So I posted a <laughs> a, uh, a video on Instagram um, uh, of Family Guy, right? And, mm-hmm. and, it, and it was like a Peter like beating up Meg uh, and making her write something like for, oh, like, you know, it was, it was so appropriate. It was remarkable. Like it couldn't have been better. And I tagged Kara Barrett and Ben Clymer and it was, it was awesome. You know, I cried of laughter. Even, I think, even, I think even like a Hodinkee person messaged me and said, yo, that was hysterical. 
That's so funny. You know, like, and I won't say who it was. Now, I know it was someone. I won't say who it was. But they were like, yo, that was that was literally the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. You know, uh, so so everyone does it. And, and, and then sometimes it's in good taste. But, you know, overall content portfolio, your content, and you know I watch so much of it, uh, is constructive. It's intelligent. It's and you know listen, what I mean? Like, and it's, it's you know, not like neither of us break ground in our thoughts. Neither of us are geniuses. But like, you know, you, you make a really good observation and a really good suggestion and you move I'm, on. I'm kind of a genius. I, I had I went through a phase where I made any everyone in my family call me a wizard. I was every time I was right, I was like, Well, you know, I'm a wizard. And they were like, Christian, if you say that again, I'm going to break this bottle of amaretto on your face. And my mom would do it too. She's a sick person. Amaretto that was threatened to be broken. By the way, suck a nugget scenario. Once again, thank you so much for the donations. Well, Tanzil. Okay. Another another question from Tanzil. You ready for this one, Christian? Yeah. Name the watch that reminds you of the following horology guru. I'm going to start. So Bear Clooney watches, Rolex Ceramic Submariner, Ben Clymer, Universal Geneve, The Governor, a Broken Timex, Archibald Chester what, 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 Yeah, the, the, the River Rat. <laughs> Archibald Chester Fuel III, um, any watch you can pawn to pay the rent. Rolex. I don't know. I mean, that wasn't very thoughtful of me. But what would you, if you had to pick Mike B, Ben Clymer, the governor, and Archie, what watches signify that? Well, Mike B is definitely a Rolex. I, I, I mean, I, maybe I don't follow him enough. I would have, I was going to peg him with uh, uh, a Daytona. Does he like Daytona? Oh, I was going to peg him with a Daytona. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know him well. We've never talked. He's totally ripped me up on forums before, and I love it. I totally appreciate it. Like, no resentment at all. Um, but I definitely have seen his collection or his watches. Um, and I Daytona for him. Who is the next person? Ben Clymer? Ben Clymer. Um, ben Old. Oh, 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 Ben is Ben's really consistent. Ben has amazing taste. Um, ben Old Ben. OG Ben. Uh, a Universal Geneve, you know, uh, you know, only compacts or whatever it may have been. Um, new Ben, new post Hodinky, you know, new Ben, Ben like Scrooge McDuck, like like Ben that he all the girls now that. like look past the fact that he's a little bit chunky. Like like I, I wish that I people would look past the fact that I'm a little bit chunky, like the same way. Um, are you, are you always ben, stop? stop. Are you on the show calling yourself chunky? And well, well yeah, for Federico, listen, I look great with a shirt on, buddy. <laughs> let's, let's not let's, let's not go there, okay? Everyone's like, oh, you're so thin. I'm like, yeah, it's because I have a bulky sweater on. So, <laughs> so, uh, ben, new Ben, um, Car uh, Cartier or Tiffany signed vintage Patek Philippe chronograph, right? Because okay. Ben went from something that eh, $10,000 watch to, eh, $80,000 watch, you know, uh, God bless him. He's a very successful man. Wish nothing but the best. Uh, who was the next person? TGV? No, TGV. No. Um, no, 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 no disrespect. Um, but I don't know, a Bambino, like an Orient or some other, you know, entry level watch. That's cool. Um, see how, how much very restraint I just used. Around. I just used so much restraint. You have no idea. Um, and then, uh, uh, Archie. who was that? Archie? Uh, you know what? Um, I, I don't know. Archie's a wacko. I think he's the funniest. He's a funny guy. I think he's great. Um, total wacko. I don't know. Whatever it was the most money. Whatever that he would sell the pays rent. I don't know. Whatever's the most money. I, <laughs> I have no idea. Oh man, dude! It's I have a feeling like he has a ton of money though. Don't you? I mean, yeah. I mean, I. I, I mean, just feel like he has a ton of money and he he cries poverty, man. Which hey, good for him if it works. I mean, I wouldn't do it. But this, if, if I could show up, actually, you know what? I might start it, start turning into an e beggar because I've been just screaming for like half an hour, and like people are throwing me five bucks left and right. I might quit Delray Watch and just go on like telephones here, make my new living. Yeah, you could like the Jerry Lewis. You have to get Federico, like the Jerry Lewis telephone. You do it like you you pick up a um uh you know a charity and you take a cut. Yeah, the charity Federico's pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no man but listen so what's next on the list for you like what watch i know as dealers it's a little hard because watches come in and out but yep, forget yep. you own theo and harris like what do you want next for your personal collection buddy? so i have two things on my list and i and i decided one of them the other day and i'll be very very candid with you um we're moving we're, we're trying to move in i love retail retail is amazing trying to move into advertising you know yeah. this I yeah. want to make some partnerships with brands that are not related to watches. I want to. I, I wear. I wear Levi's five elevens. I would love to have a partnership by Levi's. That's all I, I wear. I, 
I wear I wear Warby Parker eyeglasses. I would love to have a deal with Warby Parker, right? So so Anna and I have both agreed that when we break a million dollars in advertising sales, we'll both buy day dates. And by we'll both, it probably means I'll buy us both day dates, right? You so know what I love you, dude, because what? when I first met you in real life in Queens, and you were too young to order your cocktail, so I had to order it's it for true. you. You had to order it for me, yeah. I asked you, bud, you know, we've been watching each other. What's your dream watch? And you said day day. And yep. we're five years later and that hasn't changed at all. I know. Isn't it kind of funny? And 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 I didn't grow up like like I, I don't know, I didn't grow up uh, idolizing the watch. It was something that just hit me on a gut level for so many reasons. It's 15 or 16 and uh, and I've owned dozens. I've owned dozens of day dates. But uh but to have one, it's mine. I'll never sell it. Maybe you know what I would do? Engrave 1M on the back. 1 million in sales, right? For for advertising. Oh, that's how Boom. It's, hell. it's my watch. So, and I'll never sell it. Yeah, you know, if I had to, I don't know what my like super commemorative watches. I, I, it's probably going to be that Breguet, like the first Breguet I fell in love with. My brother showed me before I was into watches. And actually, the scary part is I can afford that Breguet now. Like pre-owned, they're like eleven grand, but yep. I, I don't want to buy it. Like I feel yep. like I'd be shutting the door on something if I bought that watch. Yep. And, and is it a liquid watch? I mean, is it necessarily liquid? No, it's not liquid at all. It's a freaking Brigade Classique. Yeah. So it, you know, it's, it's, it's it tough because you could buy almost, but there are a lot of watches. You could buy a yellow gold sub and like you could just sell it when you're done with it. You know what I mean? But uh, but if it's not liquid, it's a big commitment. That's how I feel about so many watches that I would love. I love vintage Piaget. Dude, I would wear a vintage Piaget with a mesh bracelet all winter. But I know that I'm going to lose a lot of money when I sell it. I know it. Here's the thing. I mean, I'm trying to not lose the romance. I mean, I sell watches for a living. And, and like, that's awesome. And it's a dream of mine. And I love my job. But when it comes to my personal collection, I don't want to think of it as liquid. Like, I don't right. want to no, think I rationally. It. I want what I want. It's, I just, want. it's just hard to break yourself out of that you know, I pattern. I agree. But I think the moment where we start thinking only, like, as like an cents. investment, then like what's what, you know it, it you lose something. You know what's you know what's funny though, and I know you could do the same thing. Uh, and I have I have two clients that do it. Take a hundred grand, just a hundred grand, just invest in watches. And I know that sounds crazy, but if you think about it, if you if you spend the next two weeks thinking about it, I bet that you'll come to me with three watches that you could spend easily cumulatively a hundred grand that you know will be worth more money. You know, I can't not think about watches in regard to money. I just can't. No, watches I, can be – and, and it's the easy way out. Everyone's like, oh, don't buy a watch for investment. I agree. If you're looking just to enjoy it, then don't worry about how much money you gain or you you you, you make or lose on it. But you're, if you're going to sit here and tell me that a Patek 5070 is on an undervalued watch at 70 grand, you're nuts. Like you're I, nuts. Uh, no, I agree. I agree. I agree. It's just, I don't want to lose all the enjoyment. I don't want to make it purely financial. But Kev V says, a two watch collection, the stainless steel, the new stainless steel Pepsi GMT. So, would you, okay, so if he has a sub no date, sub ceramic no date, would you get a Pepsi bezel GMT that just came out or a Tudor GMT that just came out? Two watch collection? Yeah. So I get the. Ceramic sub. I would get the Tudor 36 millimeter uh, Black Bay, the with the blue dial, the one that just came out. Oh my God, dude! This Tenzil guy's on fire. I got the funniest question for you. Which of the following has more patina? Federico's old Eterna Contiki World Timer, Tim Mosso's JLC Memovox, or the girl Christian matched with on Tinder? Oh <laughs> God! Fuck. <laughs> do you like patina in your women? Let me ask you that. I know you love know, it. You know what's you know what's funny? As as a suburban kid that likes to like think he lives in the 50s every once in a while with a thin tie, you know, I can't help but to think that I'm Benjamin Bratton, man. I can't help but to say, Hey, Miss Robinson, you know, you're, you're freaking me out. You know, you're freaking me out, Miss And she'd be like, Benjamin, you're being ridiculous. And I'd be like, Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's it's funny. It's um you know what's funny? And not not to get into women and sex, that's an inappropriate conversation for a watch channel, but um <laughs> I always love that when people say but it's like no offense, but you're an ugly person. 
Oh, I was going to take offense to that two seconds ago, but now that you said no offense. Just because you said it, it makes it okay. Exactly. Right. So, um, but I feel, um, you know, I'm 22, you know, I'm very young, you know, and, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur just like you are. Uh, and it, you know, with, with entrepreneurship comes a lot of, you know, I think maturity and you learn to invest and you learn to make big boy decisions. Um, and older women are very interesting. I gotta say, man, I, I, I can have more conversation with an older woman than I can with a younger woman. I'll tell you that right now. Dude, uh, I, I goes blushing. I, it's I'll put it this way: the older, the, like I'm translating an old Neapolitan proverb that makes no sense in English, but you'll probably get it. The older the cow, the sweeter the milk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that anything I said that was inappropriate was just dwarfed by what you said. Yeah, but that's not sexual at all in Italian. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it wasn't sexual. Uh, the uh, the longer the otters, the better the milk. What did you just say? What's wrong with you, dude? I don't even know. Like, I hope my mom. Italians are terrible, man. Oh, it's um, all it's awful. So yeah, so that's that's Basil World. So Nomos it had a really cool watch. Doesn't make any sense in my opinion. Um, I think that Paddock's new Aqua Aquanograph is. You know what's funny? And I'm gonna go off on a little rant right now. So. Go, go. Bear with me. I'm actually going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hold my mic while I go off on this rant. Um, I think that Paddock's new Aquanaut chronograph is pathetic, right? I think it's a cool watch. I do. I do. No, I, think it's a cool watch. I don't think it's necessarily impressive that Paddock, uh, that Paddock integrated a chronograph into an Aquanaut. It's not very hard. All they had to do was recreate a case, right? They had to recreate the, the Aquanaut case to, you know, to fit a chronograph. Not very difficult. Um, but what I think was, and I don't dislike the watch that much, but what I think was particularly pathetic is that Patek Philippe, one of the most important luxury companies in the world, is still so behind on how to appeal to young people. It's amazing. Has Terry Stern ever spoken to a young person? Wait, young people. Uh, oh, wait. No, no, I'm not done yet. I am not I, done I, yet. I got so, okay, fine. I got a rebuttal. Young people, although yes, I w agree. I bet you market research shows they're interested in in brighter, sportier things. I 100% agree, or I concede that. Okay, but your real problem, the reason that young people don't buy your watches, is because you haven't communicated in a way, or communicated to young people in as long as I've been alive. That's it. Paddock joined Instagram last week, and guess what? Their account sucks. Like, sorry, I don't feel bad for you. You're worth billions of dollars. You're worth billions of dollars. And still, you're not going to say, hey, let me think of a really good plan of execution on how to win on Instagram. I hate you, and I hope you lose all your money. <laughs> oh, God. All right, buddy, you know we've talked about this many times. And you know, before my rebuttal, you know I agree with you 100%, right? Oh, yeah. But... Okay, I never worked for Paddock, but I did work for Piaget. And, you know, I was in charge of a marketing budget and a sales budget. And every quarter, they'd say, Federico, here's $2 million. Like, go run some ads. And I'm like, guys, enough of the New York Times and Wall Street Journal shit. You know, YouTube advertising. Let's get a, a blog written up on Hadinki. Let's do Instagram. And, you know, they say, why? I'm like, well, you're not reaching the younger people. And you know what my boss said? And I've had two different presidents of Piaget, and they both answered the same thing. They said, Federico, young people don't buy watches. They can't afford it. So I think their Aquanaut is, for, is a young-looking watch for old people that want to feel young. And hey, I 100% agree with you, 100%. But my point is, and and this doesn't mean that you need to. This doesn't mean that you need to ch cheapen your watches or, or enter a new price point like Mascheron Constantin. Which is but awful. I hate I hate that collection. But and the movement's a complete piece of crap. So if know. you begin to speak to young people, right? Even, like let's say you 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 figure out a way to start speaking to young people when they are. 15, 16, 18, 21, when they get their first finance job. Wait, by 40, AP had no shot at owning them. You own them. That's the game. That's what they don't get. You know. Well, by the way, I'm at 2% computer battery, so we have to closing statements here because I don't want to. All right, fair enough. But I'm just saying that makes you a great businessman because you have vision. But I can tell you, having worked for a watch brand, they don't care. About they don't have it. Don't you know them. why? Because they make so much money, they don't care. And I hate that. You know, like for me, you know, I'm, I was trying to be strategic and my boss is like, we don't give a shit about strategic. You got a number to hit this month, hit it this month. 
terrible like, buddy you know, i gotta go i love you thank you for having me on best. we'll do this again next month on my channel i'll talk to you tomorrow guys thank you so much for watching if you don't already follow me on follow us on youtube uh head over to theo and harris and subscribe to our youtube channel we upload five days a week different content every single day and uh and that's it i love you all uh very much christian next time about you be on time you're a watch salesman ciao bello ciao buddy Guys, thank you so much for joining me on the FTW channel. If you guys enjoy it, leave a comment below. I might do this live stream thing, you know, in the future, maybe even solo if it's not too boring. Let me know if you guys want that. Leave a comment. Thank you so much, fellas. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Mike B, take care.